Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Friday, April 29th, noontime, mountain time, 2022. An uptick in seismicity at the volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest. But the big story, storm forecast to threaten the plains as the Northeast, well, we predicted it, is below average. Extreme fire danger remains high for the Central Plains. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, extreme fire danger remains high for the central and southern plains. Here are the frost and freeze alerts for the Friday morning. Hello. It was chilly. Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia. It was a cold day down there. We have a severe storm threat for the day. Very likely, Kearney, Omaha, Nebraska, Kansas City, Wichita, Tulsa, Oklahoma City. Heads up. It's springtime. There's this severe weather risk for Friday. We'll just blow it up for you. So you can be prepared in your area. And one other thing to mention is the fire weather risk for Friday, April 29th. We hit some heavy winds. We have a wind warning and we're right down here at the edge. So I can only imagine the type of winds here in this extreme triangle. So heads up for heavy winds. Hail was reported overnight in Kansas after a massive hailstorm in Texas caused insurance companies to report an uptick in calls. And I guarantee the, the hail in Texas paled in comparison to some of this hail reported in Kansas. Take a look at this. Take a look at that piece. See if we could blow that up for you. Wow. Wouldn't want to get hit on the head with any of those with increased cosmic rays as we descend into the grand solar minimum. As our magnetosphere weakens, more cosmic rays will enter the atmosphere, forming larger and larger hail as we move forward. So get yourself a helmet and a good insurance plan. Extreme critical fire weather, severe storms and flooding in the plains. Widespread dry conditions and strong winds will result in extremely critical to critical fire weather conditions across portions of the southern and central high plains. A moderate risk of severe thunderstorms is outlook for portions of the central plains this afternoon into tonight. Heavy rainfall will exacerbate ongoing river flooding in the northern plains. There's flood warnings and watches up in the north here. So click on your county for more information. Those heavy winds would be in the pink areas. It's going to be windy. Over in the east as well. Let's check out some of the GFS models, shall we? And here is the weather forecast where you can see that Northern Plains severe weather threat there through Saturday. And then a secondary threat here Monday developing Texas and Oklahoma. So that, that's the main threat. And then there we have a huge snow system moving through. So we'll take a look at those totals in the short term. Here we are at the GFS model for total precipitated snow. And let's just move this through. Here's your Sunday. Let's talk about Friday. You're going to have a little bit of uh, snow falling in the high elevations of Wyoming and Montana. Here's your Sunday through Monday. And Monday night, Tuesday morning is where that heavy pocket of snow is going to dump right here. South Dakota, Nebraska state line. 13 to 16 inches in some area could be blizzard conditions. We're going to keep a close eye on that as the storm develops. And so through the first week of May, the big winner here is central Idaho and the Northwest. The Pacific Northwest needs this moisture, and that is good news. So if we come take a look at the total precipitated moisture, we're going to see what appears to be an atmospheric like river pushing in from the Pacific Northwest, bringing much needed moisture to the region here. Which is basically could be out of drought by this system and as we move into the monsoon now down here in the southwest there is no precipitation so it's extremely dry and we don't see any help on the horizon none whatsoever so bad news for the southwest as they cross their fingers for an excellent monsoon seismic update no quakes of note it seems to be as if a lot of deep well injection has been happening here in texas these quakes have been ongoing for days in this region and that's where they do that they inject toxic water deep into the earth right here in this spot so that's quite disgusting but we are not at a loss for seismicity there is in fact an uptick in small seismic events in the pacific northwest we're here at the pacific northwest seismic network links will be below 
where you can see in the last 30 days quite a flurry of activity here at St. Helens, as well as Mount Rainier, and also Newberry. Those are the top three volcanoes. But the most significant uptick is the regular seismic activity rumbling under Mount St. Helens. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. We'll take you over to the map and we'll show you some of those clusters. Here we can see Mount St. Helens and we can see Mount Rainier. And that's where most of the activity, if we come over to the summit of Rainier, you can see quite a cluster there in the last two weeks there. So that is the seismic activity happening at the summit of Rainier and on the flanks. And then if we come down to St. Helens, there's lots of activity around St. Helens, as well as at the summit caldera. In fact, we have an event in the last two days popping up. And those are the events in the last two weeks. So that is your Pacific Northwest seismic update. Stay tuned for any changes to the seismicity. Now, a quick look at space weather here. We're looking at those X-ray flux. We had a small M-flare kickoff just a few hours ago. And here we're looking at telemetry, discover solar wind. One thing I want to note here is that the plasma speed is hovering high at 500 kilometers per second. The density is quite high. And we're waiting for another coronal whole stream to couple with us, which could bring us up into geomagnetic storm. And so we'll bring you over here to the WSA annual solar wind prediction, and you can see how that works. Right when it resets, we'll start talking here. You can see the coronal whole stream coming off the sun, green as earth, and it's going to hit us right there, boom, on the 29th. And we'll go through the entire stream for about a day, and then we'll come out of it. That's the only space weather making event that's going to be hitting us, and that's going to increase the plasma density right there for about 24 hours. And that could bring us into geomagnetic storm. And the official three-day geomagnetic storm and auroral forecast is showing that in about 24 hours from now, making this video, tonight into tomorrow morning, we could get into KP5. It's our prediction we could get up as high as KP6 because of the lingering telemetry. We're still up pretty high here. And it, if it's driven up into the 600, we'll definitely hit KP6, in my opinion. So stay tuned for a unpredicted uh, geomagnetic storm being reported on by the lane stream. <laughs> now, one of the worst invasive species on Earth was just found in western Washington in scary numbers, and it is the African clawed frog. It eats everything, and it uh, outcompetes almost all native species by eating up all the insects, all the tadpoles, and all the amphibians. Well, that, that's what tadpoles are. But an invasive species is consuming and competing with native species in western Washington, including salmon. Scientists have spotted the African clawed frog in Issaquah, Lacey, and Bethel. The frogs were initially brought to the United States to be used in pregnant pregnancy tests and later became pets and then released to ponds where they now, well, have become a problem. So if you see any of these babies, you know what to do. I said it. Now, something really interesting here we're going to talk about. A hiker snaps a ghost-like figure on a mountain and it turns out to be a rare phenomenon. Pretty freaking spooky. The hiker photographed a ghost-like figure when he climbed the mountain, which turned out to be a rare phenomenon. There it is. We're going to blow that up for you. Thomas Swallow 39 had gone ahead, ahead of his friends to only be freaked out because he thought he saw God. Now, this illusion known as a Brock Inspector is actually a, when you cast a large shadow of yourself into a cloud or mist. So this was actually his shadow that freaked him out. And he was alone up in the high country. So I can only imagine the effect this would have on you, the Brock Inspector. But it is fantastic and quite rare. And I thought we'd bring it to your attention. Something else fantastic and quite rare happening tomorrow in the southern hemisphere of our planet. The April 30th, 2022 solar eclipse black moon. A rare cosmic event, powerful wish-granting portal, heightened financial opportunities, a veil into the other side is very thin, carries the power of a hundred new moons, liberation from all that's holding you back, and soulmate connections. The only problem is to witness this, you'll have to be in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, like most of us, we have a total lunar eclipse coming up that will bring the full power of the super flower blood moon to Colorado. And this is May 15th. To wrap up Squatterman 2022, 
The VIP dinner will go outside and witness the super flower blood moon eclipse, total lunar eclipse. And if you want to know how to spot it in your region, it's going to be, well, right after sunsets through about 2 a.m. We have some great graphics here over at time and date where you can see totality is going to start um, right here around 3 a.m. UTC and go through about 6, 5 a.m. UTC. So it's going to be a long-lived event. Monday night in the Northern Hemisphere. Here you can see how that's going to move through here. All of the Southern Hemisphere are going to get to see it there in South America. Same people who saw the solar eclipse tomorrow will see the total lunar eclipse as well as all the 48 states. So good news. Get out and look up May 15th in the evening for the May 15th to 16th, 2022 total lunar eclipse. Now, a major ocean current is at its weakest point in 1,000 years. We reported on this when the paper came out, and we're going to go over it again. Another article coming out in Scientific American. Natural variations in the AMOC um, are the lowest in 1,000 years. And we know what happens when the AMOC shuts down. It, it creates, it wreaks havoc with the weather in Europe. Here's the paper we'll leave you meridional overturning circulation weakest in the last millennium and for those of you that saw the movie well it doesn't end well when that overturning ocean circulation the amok shuts down yes that's big ben <laughs> now lost maya city inside a volcano crater explored by archaeologists for the second time this is quite interesting in the late pre-classical period 400 bc to ad 250 there was a thrying Mayan city consisting of temples, houses, and squares in the middle of the volcanic lake Atitlan. The Atitlan, situated in the highlands of Guatemala, lies within a volcano crater more than 5,000 feet above sea level. And they said Carter there. <laughs> so if you're interested in that type of stuff, we'll leave you links below to the article, which is more of a short article. Sharp Pictures, James Webb Space Telescope completes its alignment in a huge milestone. Now it has reduced the temperature of all the parts to almost absolute zero before it fires up. And that's what it has to do. It has to match the ambient temperature outside in space. So if you're interested in the James Webb Telescope, check out the article at space.com, which will be linked below. Now, two interesting things to close up and... A new theory explains the mystery behind the fast magnetic reconnection, the formation of coronal mass ejections. I don't really believe they actually know what's going on, but they've come up with a model. And this is what they call the Hall effect. And they're using it to explain how these theoretical magnetic field lines could recouple, snap, and then reconnect. And if you're interested in solar science, I suggest you come over, read the article, and then click the links to the paper down below right here. See how I just showed you how to do that? The first principle theory of the rate of magnetic reconnection in the magnetospheric and solar plasmas published yesterday. So that's pretty fresh off the presses. Something else fresh off the presses, and we're going to finish up with this. Astronomers are about to make a massive announcement about something in the Milky Way. Will it be alien life? Will it be the galactic cosmic wave? Will it be some other fantasy black hole? No one knows. But in two weeks' time, the European Southern Observatory, or ESO, is going to present the world with new information about the Milky Way. It's anyone's guess what the announcement will be. But based on what we know of their recent efforts, there's reason to get excited. The results being presented are from the Event Horizon Telescope, or EHT project, which was responsible for producing the first ever image of a fake black hole. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when fake black holes are science. And we're all waiting to see the next science fiction -y thing that ESO is about to release. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. We love you. That's a boom. Yeah.